Hi, I'm Erin Gallagher and you tuned on to the one-on-one -on -one interviews with Canna. Is there a sporting culture in your country? Definitely. I think uh, the saying in South Africa that we're proudly South African. Um, we're not called the Rainbow Nation for, we call that for a reason. And I just think that no matter what sport it is, whether it be cricket, rugby, swimming, the sport really does, I mean, it unites the country. And I mean, we just witnessed now, we've won the 2019 Rugby World Cup. And I mean, the country is still feeling the effects from it. So it's really awesome to be part of a, a nation that's so proudly supportive of each code. And it's, it's really cool to be, to say that I'm South African, yeah. What is your current occupation? Oh, <laughs> so I'm currently on a four-year gap, yeah? Uh, <laughs> I have my sights set on uh, the 2020 Olympics, so I'm making sure that I've cleared my schedule just for that. <laughs> How long have you been swimming for? Um, I think I've been swimming for around about 12 years, maybe. Yeah, 15 to 12 years, yeah, 12 to 15. Where are you currently training? Do you train every day and how often do you train in a day? So I'm, I'm situated in Durban and I train with Graham Hill and luckily because I'm a sprinter I don't have to train as much as the distance guys do. So I can get away with six to eight sessions a week and about four gym sessions a week where the training can range from an hour and a half to two hours. You already mentioned uh, Graham is a current coach, so yeah. what qualities do you look for in a coach? Do you see these qualities within yourself? The, the thing that comes to mind when I think of Graham is that he is very experienced and he knows swimming. Oh, it's, it's crazy to look at him and see how much he knows about swimming and how much he t believes in himself and how much he trusts himself, which I think for me that's the biggest thing is because it makes it easy for me to trust him because he knows exactly what he's doing and so I can almost hand my life over to him and he can tell me what to do. And um, yeah, I believe in him and I believe in his training. And I think in a way I do see those qualities in myself because I do believe in myself and I do believe that I can achieve anything I set my mind to. So it's really awesome to have that relationship with Graham where we can both trust each other. And I think that's rule number one in a coach swimming relationship. Yeah. Uh, your reason for swimming and your first swimming memory. Oh, oh, my first swimming memory was actually being thrown into a pool, not knowing how to swim. So that's probably why I hated it for quite a while. Um, I think I just started to be water safe. My mom wanted me to make sure, well, to make sure that I was okay if I'd ever felt, found myself in a situation where I was in the water. And um, yeah, that's pretty much the reason why. And I hated it for a very long time. Thank goodness I grew out of that though. <laughs> uh, do you believe swimming has changed you for the better? Multi-character, social aspects, uh, and being more interactive. Uh, yeah, definitely. Especially interactive. I mean, if I didn't have swimming, I don't know what I would be doing. Probably watching Netflix on the couch. But uh, it's really awesome. Uh, if I look back to who I was five years ago, I can see that my my whole life has changed and I've changed. And I think it's due to, to swimming. And I mean, swimming. You, you build character through adversity and swimming is definitely not an easy sport to get through. Um, it teaches you a lot of life lessons along the way. And I mean, I was injured for two years and I learned more about myself in those two years than I have in 21 years of living. So I'm very grateful. Even though I was injured, I'm grateful that I went through that hardship because I learned, I learned more about me and I learned to yeah, love myself more because of that, if that makes sense. Who was your greatest sporting leader growing up? Um, are they still your all-time um, For me, when I was younger, it was definitely Karen Prince Lou. I remember seeing her walk around the pool and I would get so nervous just seeing her from like 50 meters away on the other side of the pool, I could spot her in the crowd of a million. And um, she really was such a great mentor to me and I, I watched how amazing she was with other swimmers as well. So a swimmer like that, I'll never, forget who she was as even though she's retired now I'll never forget who she was as a mentor and I mean she still is a mentor um, to all of us who are still going and yeah she's always been my all-time favorite mentor and I still look up to her and I still love her and I still I just hope that I can be as great a person as she was to me to the younger swimmers yeah besides yourself who would you say is your biggest competitor 
uh, <laughs> I could say the girl that's sitting in the same room as me. So um, me and Bex do some different events, Rebecca Mida, and but at training, she's honestly like one of my favorite people to be at training with. She is, <laughs> this is a joke because Rebecca's the hardest trainer that I've ever met, and there's maybe one day a week where she <laughs> she doesn't perform very well at training, and that's the one day where I'm ahead of her in training. And I'm like, yeah, this is my day, it's my time to shine. But um, it's obviously good competitive, friendly competitiveness. But I think that's really important to have, especially me and Bex are there at training together every single day. And it's really awesome to have uh, that competitiveness in the pool, but then outside we have the best friendship. So I think it's really cool to have that and that we can push each other along the way. If not swimming, what could be your next choice? Um, I think tennis. Not because they earn millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars for two hours of playing tennis, but I just respect all the hard work that goes into it. It's a very individual sport like swimming, so I think that's why it kind of attracts me, but um, they also just look really cool on the tennis court. <laughs> Where would you say your professional swimming career went I think it started when I was about 15, which was six years ago. I. I made my first international, the, the senior SA team, and we traveled to Glasgow for the Commonwealth Games. Yeah. What was the biggest meet that you participated in? Um, I definitely think it's been world champs. I think for me, the biggest one for me was in 2018. It was in Hangzhou, China. It was the biggest one for me because I made my first world champs final, which was really awesome for me. And I placed seventh in the world, which was something that I never thought I'd be able to do, which was really awesome. Is there any ritual you perform uh, to get you psyched up before this? Um, well, firstly, it depends on what kind of mood I'm in, because then that's the music that I listen to. My music range is completely different. But then, definitely on the block, what I, I like to flick my fingers before I go down and then shake my arms, and I feel like I'm ready for my race after that. Your biggest uh, swimming accolade or achievement today? Um, like I said earlier, I think for me it was placing seventh at World Champs. I just remember sitting in the call room and there were world record holders in there and there were people who had won World Champs before and I, it sounds weird because I was a little fish in a big pond but I felt like I belonged in that room and for me I'll never get rid of that feeling and it was really amazing to see myself in a room with all these incredible swimmers that I've looked up to for so long um, and I'll never forget that moment. Are the Olympics inside for this year? Definitely, yeah. So, luckily, I, or I have some of the qualifying times for 100 freestyle and 100 butterfly, and those two events will be my main focus going into the 2020 Olympics. So, yeah. Have you adapted your training styles um, or changed any of your training uh, regime in order to prepare for the Olympics? Um, honestly, I think so. So I don't really know the scientific background behind it. I leave that up to Graham. So whatever Graham tells me to do, I do. So I don't really take note of what's going on. But the training definitely has quadrupled in size. It's been, uh, uh, the last six months have been really incredible. It's been tiring. It's been uh, life changing, but uh, it's really, I mean, it's everyone goes through that and it's part of the process. And I would do it a hundred times over if it meant that I could swim in the finals of the Olympic games. How strict is your diet? <laughs> Depends on time of the year. So if it's over Christmas or Easter, you know, then I can let my diet slip a little. But I don't like to see it as a strict diet. It's more like a healthy eating lifestyle. So once I get into routine, then I don't feel like uh, I don't crave chocolate or anything. But I pretty much stick to all the healthy options um, just because I feel better on, on the healthy options. Uh, forgive me if I've asked this question before, but have you set out certain goals you would like to achieve? I think every sports person, is, their dream is to win an Olympic gold medal and that's always been a dream of mine since I, was, since I can remember. So obviously going into, into the 2020 Olympics, it's a huge expectation, um, but at the same time I'm not expecting anything. If I go and if I swim in the final, I'm going to be equally as proud of myself because I've worked equally as hard as if I had won a gold medal to making the final. So I'm just going in there making sure that I'm going to be proud of myself either way. Uh, 
uh, we know it's kind of a taboo topic of discussion, but it's Olympic season and we're hoping it does not surface. But what are your perspectives on doping? Um, for me, obviously, it's, it's a bit of a controversial topic, but uh, I try not to get my, uh, involved in that because there's nothing that you can really do to stop it. Um, there's going to be people that do it, there's going to be people that, not, that aren't going to do it. Um, and I do, I find that it does affect the integrity of the sport in a way, but like I said, I try not to get involved in what other people are doing and try to focus on my own swimming. Um, yeah. Do you believe enough is being done throughout Africa regarding water safety? Um, honestly, for me, I, I think there's more that has been done in the past but I definitely think a lot more can be done. I mean, you often hear of stories in the news of people drowning and stuff, and I do think that it should be one of the top priorities in the country, especially because we're not a first world country. It's really important to make sure that everyone does know how to swim, because, I mean, we are surrounded by a huge amount of water. <laughs> um, and it can, you can drown very easily in a small amount of water. It, it takes seconds. And I really think it should be the top priority of the country to make sure that everyone is water safe and everyone feels safe around water. Something that no one really knows about you? Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Uh... Um, okay, so I have two different size ears. So if you look at this ear, it's a lot bigger than this ear. And that is because when I was three, I had an autoimmune disease called scleroderma. And basically what it does, it, it attacks the tissue of your skin. Um, and yeah, a lot of people call me Nemo because Nemo had a baby fin. This is my baby fin. Yeah. <laughs> favorite city or country you have visited and why? Uh, my favorite place that I've ever been to is Samoa. And it's a little island off uh, Australia. Yeah, I think so. Um, for me, that was where the Youth Commonwealth Games took place and I won my first international gold medal for a junior uh, competition. But just the place is absolutely stunning and the people there are incredible, they're so friendly, they're almost like South Africans, I think that's why I took a, a liking to it. But um, it was a very small team that went and we all just got along so well and everything about the, the tour was just perfect and it was just insanely beautiful. Your all-time favourite song? <laughs> oh, this is difficult. Okay, so if I had to choose, it would probably be A Thousand Miles by Vanessa Colton. <laughs> what do you do in your spare time? Mm, so, other than swimming, I think I'm quite a lazy person, so it's, it's, I like, like to Netflix um, and watch series and movies with my family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I mean, I never go travelling without snacks, if that. If that counts. <laughs> um, have you ever thought about life after swimming? What would you like to pursue uh, after the world of aquatics? Do you, would you want to pursue another dream or occupation? A lot of people ask me what I'm doing after swimming and I have absolutely no idea. I keep hoping that one day I'm going to wake up and I'm going to know exactly what to do with my life afterwards. But I think um, if I had to narrow it down, my dream job in the world after swimming would be to film for National Geographic. Yeah. What would you, what, what would your advice be to up and coming swimmers? I think for me the most important thing that I've learned over the years is to never compare yourself to other swimmers or to other people in life in general. I think, I mean, it's human nature to compare yourself to the person sitting next to you or the person in another room, but I mean, you cannot compare your chapter seven to someone else's chapter 23. It's virtually impossible to do that and it's it's only gonna make you jealous and angry and and that's not gonna help you. You know, you gotta focus on yourself, focus on your career and focus on what makes you happy. Just leave everyone out, out of it, just focus on you.